thanks for your company. If I should say there's a coconut seller around the corner, uh, I'm positive you'd probably be looking out for a man. Well, would you be surprised by the bold step of a young female university graduate who's ventured into the coconut business? But for people like her, how are they managing? And is there any support for them? As a build-up to International Women's Day tomorrow, we look at how some females are venturing into jobs that used to be the preserve of men. Karen Dodu reports. Adowarim Luguzuri is a graduate from the University of Ghana. Coconut vending here in Ghana is a profession mainly for men. From the planting to the selling of coconuts, it's a man's world. But Zuri was not deterred by this. Oh, sometimes um, at the onset, okay, you know, you have people trying to cheat you because they think you have no, you don't have enough knowledge <clears throat> about the about the business. Yes, basically, but um, with time, I've been able to find ways and means to you know um, prevent all these things. Because as as every day I keep on doing the job, I'm able to learn new strategies that would help me, you know, and protect me as a lady to do this job. So since I found myself in, let's say, a strictly, a male strictly um, venture, um, I try as much as possible to be able to communicate to them in a way that they feel at home, you know, that I don't, I don't make things too rigid, okay, because I'm the only female here, as, as, as you've seen, you know, I, I get them closer to my, to me, you know, we get, we are more or less like a family. You understand. So when you do that, when you get them close, when you're able to share ideas, when you're able to encourage them and do all that, they feel at home and you know, it makes the job easier for them. Another lady who has mustered courage to venture into the male-dominated area is Regina. She is a software developer. Being in a male-dominated space comes with different challenges and also different opportunities. Um, I think for me, I have learned to develop a tough skin and I have learned to sort of find my voice and then stand on my own. Um, I am always getting the five-second shock reaction because I'm never what anybody expects anytime I come as the CEO of a tech company. And I am also sort of the outlier and I stand out because, you know, I am in my previous job, as the only female in the IT department, you know, everybody was curious about what I had to offer. So it's it's been a roller coaster ride. I mean, entrepreneurship is up, down, up, down, up, down. But um, I keep riding the wave, and so far, I'm happy that I chose that path. You might call it a short time in business, but for Zuri, little did she know that her thirst for coconuts some five years ago will lead to the birth of a dream. So one day um, in school, my friends and I went out to get food. We got to Oponglo to buy our food and then I saw coconut, a coconut vendor. So I just told my friends, oh, let's go get some coconut because I personally like coconuts. So um, in conversations with the coconut seller, he made mention he worked with an NGO and all that, he had a diploma and all that. So that, that, that got me interested since I went to town, speaking to the coconut vendors, because I used to see a lot of coconut guys, you know, room in, in my vicinity. Okay, so I spoke to them, asked them where they were getting the coconut from, well, what's the process, how much they buy it, where, you know. So by the close of the day, I was able to get enough information. And um, that was on a Thursday. So Saturday night, I told my daddy that, um, this is what I want to do. And on Sunday, I went to Isawam to start with the empire. Went into the plantation, found out who was in charge, how we could get the coconuts. And that was the start of Zuri Coconut. Ghana, like many other countries, has seen an increase in the number of women starting up their own businesses. The focus is gradually shifting from the usual trading and culinary services that women are known for. Zuri Coconut is into the wholesale and retail of fresh coconuts. So um, with the wholesale, we are able to sell to 
the um, vendors on the streets. And with the retail, we are able to do events, we are able to do, um, we package the coconuts for indoor events, we do corporate meetings, we do corporate get togethers, do parties and all that. Just like Zuri, Regina hopes to make a change in the Ghanaian society with her foundation, Soronko Foundation. So Soronko Academy is a coding and human centered design academy. Um, we teach children from five years to 17 and then adults 18 plus how to code and create technologies such as mobile applications, websites, software, blogging and e-commerce and also even the basics in computer and computer architecture. <laughs> across the world are doing their best to make an impact in their society. Female entrepreneurs are going the extra mile to earn a living for their families and make a name in society. As we mark the International Women's Day themed Press for Progress this year, we ask, are we really pushing the women to make progress and are we celebrating the achievements? Anita Riafi Asinom is the CEO of Ghana Women in Business a business network aimed at helping businesses grow. She tells me that it is high time government moved beyond empowering women. It's all well and good we keep using this word empowerment, empowerment, but what real systems, what new resources, how are we putting it into action so that the women can actually progress? Press for progress is what the theme is this year for International Women's Day. So how is the government, Ghana government and other agencies who claim to be for women, how are they pressing, are you getting me, for that progress? What what resources, what support are they giving women in business in order for them to, to, to realize their dreams, their businesses? Because there's a lot of women in Ghana who are running businesses. That means they are creating jobs, they are adding to the economy. And if you can imagine what some of the areas are, if they got some support with advocacy training, with finance, they can grow their businesses and create more jobs. As we mark International Women's Day this year and celebrate women's achievements, let us push women in business by creating the enabling environment and provide funding for our women.